And so the reason why I bring this up is, again, if we're going to find the zeros, guys, we're going to replace f of x with 0. Now, there's really two ways that we could do this problem. Okay. Again, what we can do is we can just look at using inverse operations. If I go ahead and add the 1 to both sides, I get 1 equals x plus 2 squared. I can introduce the square root to undo the squaring. However, when I do that, I just need to make sure I include plus or minus 1 equals x plus 2. So now, to isolate the x, I'm going to need to subtract by 2. And therefore, go that way, go that way, go that way, go that way. So therefore, x is now equal to negative 2 plus or minus 1. So x is equal to negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. All right, that was the square root method you guys could work on. However, we could also expand this. Won't you guys agree that we could multiply this out rather simply? x squared plus, um, let's see, 2 times the first 2. So that's going to be 4x plus 4. And then that's plus 1. So therefore, replacing this as a 0, we would, and then combining this, we'd have x squared plus 4x plus, shoot, that's minus 1. So that'd be 3. And then do we see, is this factorable? Yeah. Right, it's factorable. So we could say 0 equals x plus 3 times x plus 1. Now you can use the zero product property. And therefore, x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 1. Right? So my question to you guys is on the first example,